Welcome to this edition of Claremont Choice of Champions series. We're going to kick things off by giving you a sneak peek of what's taking place at the Claremont Performing Arts Center. As you'll see, the mastermind behind the wildly successful musical, Menopause the Musical, has one sensational lineup of entertainment coming to South Lake this fall. Lights, camera, action, meet Claremont champion, Jeannie Linders. Hi there, I'm Jeannie Linders, and in this incarnation of my life, I'm the managing director of the Claremont Performing Arts Center here in Claremont, Florida, 22 miles from Disney World. And basically I took this chair, which as you can see is surrounded by other chairs in our new black box theater, uh, about six months ago, although the process started more than a year and a half ago, when I was approached by a friend of mine who uh, is from Claremont, who I've known for 40 years, who said that the city was considering um, buying the building and turning it into a performing arts center. And because of my background, as semi-limited as it is in theater, well, it's 15 years, but it's a good chunk, more than most people in the area, um, I came out to, t to find out and take a look at the facility to see if it had the potential to be a performing arts center. Because where my strength lies is I'm a good marketing person. I am, as most of the town knows, I'm the queen of menopause the musical. It's a show that I wrote 15 years ago and I marketed it around the world. And with everything else, menopause wasn't, you know, Macbeth, but technically I knew my audience. I was a menopausal woman at the time and I knew exactly where my audience was. And that was the same thing I looked at when booking, you know, the Claremont Performing Arts Center, or CPAC as we don't call it, is the, you know, who is my audience? And I, when I met with the city council, the first thing I said to him was, my job is to sell tickets. And in order to sell tickets, I need to take a look at who's out there. You know, what will you buy, for example? I mean, what, what kind of programming is, you know, interested you? What will you invest in for, you know, your entertainment and for your cultural development and things like that? So all the programs that I have been working on for the last six months, and frankly, being the um, writer and producer of Menopause the Musical has really helped me in, you know, with my relationships with people up that, you know, have these, have talent to book. I mean, that was what's been one of the benefits of my history is that they knew that I knew what I was doing. So in contacting all these people that I talked to, um, they would basically, they would listen to me say, these, this is my audience, what do you have? that you're routing around Florida that will give them a fabulous night at entertainment for an affordable price. We have great entertainment that I wanted to make affordable for our audience, and so that's the kind of shows that I looked at. However, we still have Broadway shows coming in. We have Ring of Fire coming in, that's the Broadway show. We've got Buddy Holly, the Buddy Holly um, musical that's coming from London's West End that actually is here rebooting their show from London and from um, Broadway to go on tour. So not only will they be performing here, but they'll be, they'll be rehearsing here. They'll be, you know, they'll be choreography. They'll be using all our rooms because this building, in addition to having two great performing spaces, has wonderful rehearsal rooms. We have two great rehearsal rooms. We have, and we've converted, um, we've converted a couple back rooms into a, a, a wonderful dressing area. We've got the kind of facilities that a theatrical operation needs in order to reboot their show and go out on tour. And if we can get a reputation for that with all these theatrical producers up in New York, I mean, that's another whole thing that we can bring to Claremont that no other theater has down south that isn't, you know, like a, what they call a Lort Theater, a regional theater, because we're affordable, we provide them with what they need, and and we also have great hotel prices and things like that. So it's, and, and all of this delivers to the community. You know, forget that we're bringing entertainment. We're also bringing in a lot of people that are gonna be spending money on meals and spending money on housing, you know, for hotel rooms and stuff. I mean, at this point, I think we're up to something like 1,500 room nights for our local hotels. In addition to the Broadway types of shows, and I mean, for, we've, we've got a lot of family shows. I got, we've got everything from Mutt's Gone Nuts, which is a funny dog review, to uh, Kenny Rogers' Christmas show, The Toy Shop, with Alan Thicke in it. And, um, 
and so we have a full gamut of things that's for family entertainment. We have the Chinese circus coming in, and we have the Celtic Knights coming from Ireland. That is, you know, the full blow, 30 people on stage dancing and, and with the music and the entire ambiance. We've got th great things for men. We've got, in this building here, we've got a wonderful evening with Vince Lombardi the week before Super Bowl 50, where they present the Vince Lombardi sh show. And there's a guy that does a show that where he literally is Vince Lombardi. And I watch men look at this on our webpage and they, and they, you know, they almost tear up when they see this. And this room that I'm sitting in is going to become, is going to become a locker room. And, and you get to spend a night with Vince Lombardi. We're bringing in Second City for the, for the Christmas. Second City is the place out of Chicago where all the Saturday Night Live comedians were changed. So we've got a whole three nights of improv that for a holiday show that not only will they be entertaining, but they're doing two workshops for our local uh, theater groups. For, for their uh, improv uh, classes that they run for their students, things like that. So that's a wonderful op you know, opportunity that people haven't had exposure to. Yeah, we've got the three top bluegrass people coming here. This is a show that's live streamed around the world. So Claremont not only is gonna have you know, our festival out on festival grounds, but we'll also, it'll be going all around the world to South Africa and Japan and places like that. And then our other, um, we've got a couple more festivals. Another one I'm excited about is our Gospel Mania in February. And we've got the Blind Boys, from, uh, the Blind Boys of Alabama, which is this, it was one of the top gospel groups in the world. We've got the Dirty Dozen Bla Brass Band coming in from New Orleans, which is huge. And then we've got 60 singers coming down from Florida A&M University. And these kids know how to rock out a gospel song. So, and we have a couple other groups with our gospel sh mania. Well, basically the tickets, all our tickets for all our shows are on our website, which is www.claremontperformingarts.com or claremontpac.com. And you click through and, and as far as the gala goes, the gala is also a fundraiser for the building as far as our renovations and things like that. So, but you get not only a full night entertainment and a fabulous meal and, and my favorite, a martini bar, which I just love. So anyway, come and I'll buy you a drink. <laughs> I think probably one of the most exciting things I'm excited about as a producer is the opportunity to meet and work with Darlene Love. I was able to contract her for our opening night gala on the 26th of September. It's a black tie optional, red carpet for everybody opportunity. Not only is it it's, good. it's one of those first class types of events where we're celebrating the opening of the building. And I needed to bring in a talent that would knock it out of the ballpark. And so when I saw that Miss Love was available for this, I jumped all over it because this woman was a star of 20 feet from stardom. It's a documentary that if you haven't seen it, it's a story, it, first of all, it won an Oscar. Second of all, it's the story about the women in the business back in the days of Phil Spector and Motown who were literally 20 feet from stardom. This is the woman that is the voice on To Do Run Run and all these other, show, all these other songs that people think were the Crystals or the other groups, but actually it was her and they took it and they made it other, other types of girls. This is the woman that has stood next to Mick Jagger for 30 years as he toured around the world. He, you know, as her, as her uh, backup singer. This woman has done every Christmas show for David Letterman for the last 24 years, and he did it this year on his final Christmas show. She was there, and again, she knocked it out of the park. Rolling Stone calls her the voice of the century or something like that, which, you know, they kind of say that, but if you go to our website and you see the video or you Google a video on her, She's amazing and she's a warm, loving person and she's there to, she's committed to making this opening a knockout night for us. And I have some surprises for as far as our, because this is basically, this is a gala. It's a dinner, but it's a moving dinner. And then after the show, there's an opportunity to meet Darlene and her band. I mean, not only is she bringing a full band, but she has her backup singers and we're also talking about bringing in extra strings and horns to really blow the sound out of the room. So, I mean, anybody, anybody that's ever heard a Motown song or just any type of song, they will, they will be blown away by this evening.
The One Sensational series will run from September 27th through May 2016. Many of the programs will benefit local charities and the community. You can sign up for the city's e-newsletter at claremontflorida.gov to receive announcements about the season. Also, be sure to check out Claremont Performing Arts Center at claremontpac.com. Coming up next, have you seen the new Champion Splash Park? Well, get ready to grab your sunscreen and water gear. When we come back, some fun ways to stay cool in Claremont. Hi, everyone. Summer's in full swing. And here in Lake County, there's over a thousand lakes. So that means a lot of people in and on the water. My name is Chief Carl Bishop with the Claremont Fire Department, and I have some tips to help you enjoy our waterways this summer. Let's start with swimming, a great way to stay cool. Be sure to swim in designated areas. Non-swimmers should always wear flotation devices, even in shallow water. Boaters should maintain a safe speed. And be sure to always slow down when going through a canal or an area where there's other boats or swimmers. Boat drivers should avoid drinking alcohol, just like when you're on the road. I'm counting on you to keep our waterways safe. For more information on boating safety, call the number on your screen or check out the website. Have a safe summer. the Citrus Towers duck boat tours were once a popular way for tourists to see Claremont by land and water, check out this photo from Florida State Archives from 1958. Welcome back to Claremont Choice of Champions. You don't need us to tell you that the dog days of summer are here. That's why we thought we'd share with you some of the cool creative ways to keep you and your family cool this season. Let's check it out. I'm Stephen Wiley with the Claremont Parks and Recreation Department. This summer is one of the hottest on records, and fortunately, Claremont's got a lot of great ways to beat the heat. Our waterfront park is one of the most popular destinations in Central Florida. We have one of the longest white sand beaches with a safe, designated swimming area. Another great way to stay cool and get an awesome workout is through rowing. The city offers paddle boards and kayak rentals at the park, as well as bicycle rentals. Our new Champion Splash Park has been a huge hit. Our splash pad includes many interactive features and a padded surface. The splash pad is open from 10 a.m. to 7 p.m. Monday through Thursday and from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. Friday through Sundays with special hours on holidays. The new Claremont Boathouse has a huge storage area for our local rowing club and two floating docks for launching non-motorized boats. If you would like to learn to row, contact the Lake County Rowing Association at lcra.org. The Claremont Arts and Recreation Center offers three pools for swimmers of all ages and abilities. We have a large pool that goes from three feet to six feet deep. Our spa pool is not heated. It has a ledge for sitting. And our wading pool is 18 inches deep. Yay! To find out more about our 23 parks and recreation programs, go to ClearmontArc.com or call 352-394-3500. The Splash Park will be open seven days a week through October 31st. Annual resident passes are $15 and can be purchased at the Claremont Arts and Recreation Center and at the Utility Building Department at the City Hall. For more details on the Splash Park and all water activities, contact the Claremont Parks and Recreation Department at 352-394-3500. Coming up next on Claremont Choice of Champions, we're taking you to historic downtown Claremont for an up-close look inside probably one of the smallest bookstores in our country. We'll be right back. Hello, I'm Chief Charles Broadway with the Claremont Police Department with a warning to all drivers to please be on the lookout. That's right, now that summer is here and school is out, we're asking all drivers to be on the lookout for children who are riding their bicycles. And kids, we need you to do your part to bike smart. Always wear your safety helmet. Make sure you wait for the right traffic light and look both ways before crossing an intersection. So I'm counting on everyone to be on the lookout when it comes to bicycle safety. If your child needs a bicycle helmet, come down to the Claremont Police Department. You can contact us at 352-394-5588. Did you know it took nine years to build a three-story log house? 
building started in 1896. The log house in Claremont was a popular site for local entertainment and is lodging for hunters and anglers. Welcome back to Claremont Choice of Champions series. We hope you're enjoying our show. Our next feature is our downtown update. Today we're taking you inside the quaint and adorable Rabbit's Hole bookstore and coffee shop on Montrose Street. It's probably one of the smallest bookstores in the country. Its owner, Mary Montavo, shares her story with us. Hi, I'm Yelimari. People know me as Mary. I'm the owner of the Rabbit's Hole bookstore and coffee shop in downtown Claremont. The business has been open for about close to two months. Um, we sell used books, we have new books. Um, we also do um, cafe style good coffee. So we have espressos, lattes, macchiatos, all those sort of things. It's a small place, it's about 500 square feet. Um, so we joke that I must have the smallest bookstore. I don't think in the United States, but I'm pretty certain that in Florida, I have the smallest bookstore. Um, but it, it, it's all you need. Um, I also own, uh, Vineyards of the World, which is a wine bar and craft beer bar, and we also do tapas, and it's located a little bit down the street, like literally next door. Um, that business had been there for about four years now. Um, I came to Claremont um, seven years ago. I was born and raised in Puerto Rico. I went to law school in, in the island. Um, the island got a little too much for, for me um, in the economical sense. Um, we were not getting good money. Um, it's a constant struggle, violence was too much. Um, so we, I got a job offer in Orlando and once I got to Orlando, I lived there for a little bit. Um, I did not like the chaos and the constant traffic jams and the hassle. So I asked my realtor where, that I needed a small town, I needed a, a quiet town. So he gave me a few choices, um, being that Winter Garden, Montverde, um, Windermere and Claremont. And when we got to Claremont, um, we just fell in love with it. We love the hills, um, the lakes, the, the green, the scenery. It was just everything we we're looking for. Um, my husband, he's German. He was born and raised in Germany. So when he got here, it was the closest to where he lived in the sense of the small quaint town and the green and, and all that. So it was a must for us to live here. Um, I did not like too much being an attorney. I got disenchanted with the whole thing. Even though I was, ne I was not a, I, I was a non-practicing attorney, I was working as a paralegal for the most part, but I, I just, I didn't even pursue getting my, my, my license here. It was, not, it was not something that I liked. So four years ago, we came the chance to open the wine bar next door. And um, it was in the moment when the market and everything collapsed, so we took a big leap of faith in the town, but we believed that that was possibility here. Um, so we started selling a lot of, we opened as a wine bar, but turned out to be that people wanted craft beer. <laughs> um, so we start changing the concept and changing the concept, and in that business right now, people joke that it's the wine bar with the beer problem. So we, it's a, we have like 300 beers um, right now. Um, we have uh, micro brews for the most part. We like to carry a lot of local uh, beers. Um, so it, it went from there. We were here before Wall of Beer. Um, so we were the first ones here doing craft beer. So we had a really good steady clientele. Can I see that one, Jocelyn? And I always wanted to open a bookstore and a coffee shop, always. But with the market being down, I, I knew that that was not an idea to pursue it at that moment. Um, so I just waited it out and once the market started picking up, downtown Claremont started coming more alive and, and all this, um, I decided to invest in, in, in some other project um, and this location came up then, which it was the one location that I wanted to have. I wanted to be here, I wanted it to be small, I wanted to be quaint, I wanted to be under this tree, I, I wanted this. So I waited and, and with patience and, and with a magic touch of destiny, I'm here. And, and uh, finally, I have my dream of having my coffee shop and my bookstore. Um, we also have some toys, some collectibles. Um, we do a lot of comic books, um, especially vintage comic books that, that we go really, it does really well on that. It's also the perfect location for the bookstore um, because we have a dance academy right across the street, um, which is called Not Just Dance. Um, we are great friends. She's called Rosemary, and for a long time, she insisted that we needed something for the kids to be entertained in the meantime or the parents because sometimes the parents will come and just park in the street and will have to be there inside the car for a long time. Um, even though the bar was open, they never felt comfortable going inside a bar. 
going inside a coffee shop, I mean, going inside a coffee shop is different. It, it's something more socially acceptable while you're waiting for your kid, um, you know, while they're in Dance Academy. So I, I, that's the, the main, you know, the second reason that I wanted to, to have this location. It was that, that proximity to the Dance Academy and they are a great asset to this community. Um, well, I've been a Disney fan since of course, since I was a kid, of course, every, every kid will tell you. Um, Alice in Wonderland was always my favorite story just because the many, it's not so much the cartoons or whatnot too, it's really what it dishes you behind and, and I really like the dishings and, and the sayings and the quotes and all that. It's a fantastic um, storytelling, I think. I, I love it. So when we were looking for a name, we didn't want it to be too tacky or too concentrated into the book part or into the coffee shop part. Um, so we were playing with names and then my cousin, um, she said, well, you like Alice, why don't you do something like that? And I was like, yeah, but I, what I'm going to do in that hole? Because this is a hole, it's 500 square feet. So we call it the hole. And she said, well, it's like a rabbit's hole. And I was like, there you go, that's the name. So we decided to call it the rabbit's hole. My cousin, she did everything that is here. She glued every car that is in the door. She glued that. Um, inside we have door, um, the walls are decorated with paper. Actually, we took a book and paper by paper, we glue each one of the papers in the wall. Um, and car by car, we glue everything by hand so it's not wallpaper. We wanted to make it as accurate as we could. Um, we decided to do the flying cars team. Um, the plates are Alice in Wonderland related. Um, there is an artist that I really um, like. He's called Kevin Esslinger. He's from Colorado. And he has a great Alice in Wonderland um, a selection of paintings. So I bought most of them and that's part of the decoration. And everybody that comes to the bookstore, that's the piece. That's the, those are the pieces that everybody talks about. Once we decided to call it the rabbit's hole, it just went from there and it grew into something bigger that we envisioned. But we decided to keep it like that because it's exactly like what Alice in Wonderland is. You know, it's small, it's, it's, it's weird, it's quirky. It's all those cool things that, that, that usually you envision with that. But immediately we want to open a brewery. And my husband and I, we're working really hard on acquiring a, a building here downtown right now. And, and that's the next thing for us. We, that's something that might, like now I have my dream, which is the coffee shop and the bookstore. Now it's my husband's time. People really, they're really wanting that here in downtown Claremont for a long time. Um, it was just a matter of timing and where. And finally we found, a, you know, it's a building in the street behind in Mineola Street um, because there is already a lot here going on. So we want to have something down there. When you do what you like, it's not work. It's something that I really like. So I never see it as work. I, actually, this is the happiest that I have been ever. And, and even before when I was making a lot of money, now I don't think money brings you happiness. I think doing what you like is really what, what is the key of, of, I think that's the key of life, doing what you like. So I, I think I found finally my place in the world. So I'm really happy right now. We hope you enjoyed this edition of Claremont Choice of Champions. If you have any questions or comments about today's show or would like to learn more about the city of Claremont, go to claremontfl.gov or call us at 352-241-7345. Until next time, we invite you to visit our city and find out why Claremont is the Choice of Champions.